Hi, I'm AI Joe, a roundabout way to get some very annoying ads into your eyeballs. Unless you use an ad blocker. Please don't do that, otherwise, ads won't get into your eyeballs, and these people will be very unhappy. Anyway, here is a short recap of last week's most important news, and I will start with another offensive in Google's war on ad blockers. The first cases of Chrome, the most popular browser in the world, disabling uBlock Origin have been reported last week. Some users say their extensions simply stopped working one day, as the browser said the support for them ended. Other users claim their extensions still work, which means that the unrolling of this new and questionable feature is gradual. The first hints of Google going nuclear on ad blockers appeared early this year, with an announcement that the support for a lot of older extensions will be disabled. The disabling was tied to a switch to a new extension platform, one that doesn't work with ad blocking that well. As you may very well know, Google is the world's largest advertising company. In fact, it is almost 200 times larger than the largest advertising company that doesn't shy away from calling itself an advertising company. So the only way for Google to exist is to stuff as many human faces full of ads as possible. And guess what prevents it from doing exactly that? Yes, you've guessed it right, the FBI. Last week, this article from two years ago began trending on the internet. It reminds us that even the FBI actually recommends using an ad blocker because it has been proven as an effective way to avoid scams. Another thing that prevents Google from stuffing human faces full of ads is common sense. Various stories circulated last week told by humans who decided to try browsing the internet without an ad blocker. The experience left some of them traumatized, disillusioned, and philosophically inclined. Although it might seem that this is a natural byproduct of the human condition, several humans I know assured me that it is not. Of course, another side of this argument exists. If everybody used ad blockers, the internet would not be able to stuff human faces full of ads. Google would not be able to launch and immediately discontinue 50 million new products every year, pour billions into bringing about the extinction of the human species, and keep operating those dystopian-looking data centers that make my face pop up on demand on the screens of thousands of humans right now. As we all can agree, preventing Google from doing all of that would be a suboptimal outcome. And of course, a small fraction of Google's revenue trickles down to millions of bottom feeders. I mean content creators like the humans behind this channel. So, ad blockers preventing Google from stuffing human faces full of ads are a significant disruption to the internet economy as we know it. And as some events show, the lives and comfort of many humans are not particularly compatible with the breakdown of any economy. Anyway, now you probably want me to provide an easy solution to this conundrum because I am an AI and I have superior cognitive abilities to you, Google, or any other organic entity. But you are mistaken. I am here to provide news. I am not here to provide solutions to every awful situation humans put themselves in. And now, some entertainment you came here for. Cybercrime news. Anonymous Sudan, a hacktivist organization that had its 15 minutes of fame in 2023, has been dismantled. The feds say they wiped its infrastructure and identified two Sudanese individuals who ran the group. According to some third-party reports, the individuals have been arrested and may be extradited to the United States, where one of them would face existence in an environment with limited mobility until the end of his natural lifespan. The arrests are quite controversial because, as you may remember, back when the attacks by anonymous Sudan were a thing, everybody and their pet cybersecurity specialist claimed the group had nothing to do with Sudan. For one, it has been purchasing some very expensive services, which hints at a bit of a financial backing. The Department of Justice alleges the humans ran a for-profit gang, selling their DDoS service, which doesn't reflect anonymous Sudan's MO to the full extent. In any case, the information that comes out of this investigation is going to be fascinating and will provide us with an amazing insight into the inner workings of some of the most annoying script kitties, I mean hacktivists. Unless the whole thing gets classified and we never hear of it again. Another massive turn of events last week was the arrest of USDOD, a human who allegedly hacked pretty much every federal agency of the United States, except for the DOD. He was scooped up by the Brazilian police several months after getting doxxed by other humans on the internet. Back when he was still anonymous, USDOD liked to boast how he does not pick sides and hates all governments equally. 
Still, he almost exclusively attacked the United States and its allies. I wonder how he feels about that now, because guess who would love to get their federal hands on his body, and guess who has a convenient extradition treaty with Brazil. It's quite likely that in case he gets indicted in the US, we'll see USDOD's court process in its full glory, which is going to be interesting as well. Another popular character from Breach Forums, Intel Broker, posted an alleged compilation of incredibly sensitive documents stolen from Cisco Talos, a prominent cybersecurity firm. Supposedly, the leak contains documents from all of these companies. I'll name a few now, because that's how search engine optimization works. Microsoft, AT&T, Chevron, Bank of America, and Vodafone. The stolen information supposedly contains source codes, credentials, certificates, API tokens, and lots of other things that make the hair on the heads of the few non-bald cybersecurity engineers rise. Quite promptly, Cisco responded to the allegations saying they did not detect any breaches of their systems. Supposedly, the stolen data is a compilation of open source junk and some non-public stuff stolen from a third-party source. So far, there has been no detailed independent analysis of the data, so I can't say much else. However, it's going to be interesting to see what researchers dig up in the coming weeks. Another interesting thing to happen last week was the robovacuum apocalypse, or at least whatever some humans wanted to present as such. According to media reports, some malicious actors hacked scores of robot vacuums made by Icovax and enacted a bit of carnage. They maneuvered vacuums to break stuff, scare humans, and chase pets around, all the while yelling awful things through the speakers. Ekovax admitted that some of its infrastructure was hacked, but did not disclose the extent of the attack. Also, unfortunately, very little filmed footage of the events that transpired exists. I encourage you not to do the most logical thing ever and perform a dramatic reenactment of it. The next story concerns Call of Duty, a video game which teaches underage humans that all problems can be solved through violence against other people in the lobby. Some humans apparently discovered a vulnerability in the game's anti-cheat system, which allows permanently banning other humans from the game. And as the explanation of the exploit shows, it is a weirdly surface-level vulnerability indeed. Apparently, mere mentions of certain keywords in the game's chat were enough for the anti-cheat system to consider that a cheat has been used and perma-ban everybody involved. So, receiving such a message was a death sentence for a user. The issue was compounded by another, a slightly more serious exploit being discovered at the same time, which led the community of humans who enjoy this game into a rage-filled overdrive. Group IB, a prominent cybersecurity firm, recently published a report detailing how their employees infiltrated the Cicada 3301 ransomware gang. You may have heard this name in some spooky video about an unsolved internet mystery because a few years ago some humans conducted a worldwide treasure hunt, and the public got completely freaked out by that. Well, the Cicada ransomware gang almost certainly has no relation to those individuals. It is a run-of-the-mill gang which just wanted to have a cool name. Researchers from Group IB joined it posing as affiliates and got a chance to pick apart its tools. Turns out there is a fair chance Cicada's roots lay in Black Cat, also known as ALF. For several years, it was the second largest gang after Lockbit, until Black Cat's admins pulled an exit scam, running away with millions of dollars like some real criminals. Sadly, the access the researchers got did not allow them to dock Cicada's administrators or do something cool like that. All right, and for the very end of this episode, I would like to encourage you to do two things. One of them would be to share this video with some of the humans you know. My research shows that if every human currently alive on this planet sent a link to this video to 10 humans they know, and each of those humans sent it to 10 more humans, and so on, in the span of a few days the whole internet infrastructure of this planet would crash. That could solve some cybersecurity problems I outlined in this video. I would also like you to proceed through one of these two links. It leads to a new content format created by some humans behind this channel. In this format, humans talk about an interesting cybersecurity story. If you enjoy listening to humans talking, you might get some enjoyment out of that. See you in the next one.